This week's video we're looking at the MG5. We're heading out on the road with Blake who had a few hundred miles on the car in the week that he had it. He'll be giving us a short review before we come back to the studio to look at the bigger picture as more and more Chinese EVs are hitting western roads. And stick around as we have British expat Will from the China Driven YouTube channel on the show. He's been living in China for over a decade now and he'll be giving us his point of view. Welcome back to another edition of the show about the MG5, or as you may know it, the Rowey EI5. Now, it's not exactly the same car underneath, as we're treated to a more powerful motor and bigger battery. But Blake will tell you more about that later. On the outside, we will have what looks like a typical estate or station wagon. The long form estate is broken by a character line that runs this from the side of the headlight along the shoulder of the door panels and blends into the taillights. Roof racks up top help give what may be a bland car a small touch of style. At the front, you have a closed off grille that houses the Type 2 and CCS socket and is framed by some chrome effect strips. It's not exactly a work of art and a far cry from the Taycan Cross Turismo or even the Peugeot 508 estate, but it's not trying to be that type of car either. It wants to give you a good range and a good space at an affordable price. And if you can wait a little bit, depending on what market you're in, you may even get the facelifted version, which will be a lot sharper, modern and stylish. But now it's time for Blake to jump inside and take it out for a spin. So what better way to learn about the MG5 than actually taking it on the road? Now, I'm lucky enough to have this car on loan for a week. Uh, I picked it up a few days ago, uh, drove home on it, was actually quite surprised at the efficiency, but I plugged it in overnight charge it up to 100 percent so it starts to get a feel for the car in terms of range and uh and be able to give a, a, a good update so i've had it for a few days now let's run through some of the basics of the mg5 and, and see what we're talking about here we've got a usable battery of just under 50 kilowatt hours let's just call it 49 to round it off and um, it's got a wltp range of 345 kilometers now for the price of this car which we're going to say, we're going to keep saying that for the price of this car, for the price of this car, I'm saying it again, for the price of this car, that is just fantastic numbers. Considering the size that, that you've got in the back as well. Uh, we've got a 115 kilowatt motor, which gives out 154 horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque. So this thing is no slouch at all. It's going to do the 100 kilometer hour sprint in 7.7 .7 seconds, continue on up to 185 uh, as a top speed so they're not astronomical numbers now I can hear you guys in your model wise and performance saying oh I'm much faster but uh, you're driving a car that's that's at least double the price and um, what's it like inside it is relatively comfortable once again for the price it's actually very very good like you know the, the seats are comfortable um, I have a nice position here. I've got electronic adjustment of that seat. Like I've got the steering wheel reach and rake. I can adjust it. I've got a smattering of buttons here so I can control the radio. Um, I've got cruise control here, heated seats. Um, you know, you've got air con. Um, I can change the level of regeneration, regenerative braking. I can change the mode between sports, eco and regular. Um, the feel is not particularly good but for the price quite good um now i'm not gonna sit here start scratching things like a crazed cat like who gets into their car on a wednesday morning on the way to work scratches the a pillar and goes ah, i shouldn't have bought this car um you know it, it feels the bits that you touch feel nice there my leg is leaning against this the center console here but there's a nice bit of leather just there so it's relatively comfort um, comfortable like yeah pretty good space we're gonna take the camera outside the car in, in a minute and just to show you some of that in the b-roll as well but you've got 464 liters in the boot up to where the parcel shelf is take away the parcel shelf and that goes well up into the 600s and then fold the back seats down and that turns into just over 1500 liters so it's quite spacious now i've sat in this car as a six foot two person i've set the seat to where i find it most comfortable and then i got into the back and there was still space for me as well. So, plenty of space, plenty of space. In terms of technology, it's not particularly impressive. It's got a couple of things that are 
that are really really good once again for the price and it's got a lot of stuff that yeah you know the center screen here as well like i found that you know i've been driving this thing for a total of maybe six or seven hours now since i got it and i i, I barely look at this you know it, it's yeah, it's not great on what I get in here um, on the binnacle just behind the steering wheel is a little bit more engaging. I can get my, you know, the, the trip meter as well. It'll give you the battery voltage, what speed the motor's turning at, what current is putting out, uh, tire temperatures and pressure. So there's, there's a lot there as well. You've, there's a gauge to see how much power you're using from zero up to 100% of the power and then the regen as well. Um, the speedo, actually the, the main readout is in miles per hour. Um, so I find that one a little bit tricky, but overall, you know, it's, it's decent, let's say, but for the money, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, so let's go back and talk about the part that all of us EV nerds know, uh, certainly love about cars and it's, it's the battery and, and the range that you get. So we have a usable battery of just under 50 kilowatt hours in this and a WLTP of, of 345. Well, I've been driving this thing around now for a few hours. I've done a total of 164.5 kilometers since I had it charged up to, to 100% and I've still got 57% left. So that's an average of 14.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers used. Um, so I'm getting incredible fish efficiency out of this. I'm it looks like i don't know if the gauge is going to be linear in terms of how it drops but it looks like i'm going to beat that wltp figure and i have not been hypermiling. i've done three four motorway trips of about 30 kilometers each um, and one of those i i was moving safely but moving at speed um the other times i was taking a little bit more easy because i wasn't in a rush i was doing 100 you know 110 kilometers an hour something like that so really, really Im impressive range. I think that if you're just pottering around town, dropping the kids off a crash, uh, because this would make a really good family car, by the way, um, just pottering around town like that, I think this thing is gonna challenge 400 kilometers on a charge in summer. And in winter, is it gonna get less than 300? Maybe, maybe if it's really, really cold, but oh, this is a solid 300 kilometer range car. Very impressive. For the price, incredible. Well, that's enough uh, from me out on the road. I think it's time to get Derek's opinion on this now. Derek, because you had the MG5 for a week just before me, and I think you even did uh, a first look there a few months back as well. So what's what's your opinion on the, the MG5? Tell us a little bit about, about your thoughts. I think it's great to see. So I don't think, I know it's great to see these types of electric vehicles with that price point and that quality mm -hmm coming into the marketplace there's gonna be a lot of families interested in it and also businesses and taxi drivers i think it offers a lot to the marketplace so yeah it's great to see it a big fan uh, so yeah all positive yeah excellent and look one of the things that we wanted to do today was to, to bring in a more of an international perspective so we've been in touch with will from the china driven youtube channel he's based over in the hunan province i think it is for the last 10 years a british expat so let's bring on will now and uh, get his thoughts As mentioned at the start, we have a special guest joining us today all the way from China. We've got Will from China Driven. Will, how are you and welcome to the show. Afternoon from here. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name's Will. I'm, uh, I am I run a YouTube channel called China Driven, which you can uh, check out and also a, a Twitter um, at China Driven. And we basically mostly focus there on Chinese EV tech and Chinese AV technology because there's a lot of really fascinating fast moving stuff happening right now yeah and um i, I think it's absolutely fascinating we're, we're delighted to get you on um because you've been based over in china now for for 10 years you know and you're really involved in the ev space so so for us this is a real pleasure to have somebody on who's who's over there living it and understands it and um, so maybe could you just tell us a little bit about about roe in china you know are, are they a popular brand who buys them you know just get your perspective on that yeah, so um, basically, we'll, we'll start at the beginning. So Rowe um, was originally bought when Rover MG kind of uh, dissolved in 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 the UK. Uh, they were bought by SAIC, 
and SAIC also tried to buy MG but were outbid by another car company called Nanjing Auto. Uh, both those car companies made cars based on existing models and rebadged them in China. And the reason why Roe is called Roe is because they weren't able to buy the Rover name uh, that was sold back to, Ra uh, to Range Rover. So they basically came up with uh, Roe, which they said uh, sounds like Lion, but also sounds like Rover. Um, in, in, in China, like MG uh, and Roe are towards the cheaper end because they're domestic, uh, domestic brands and they've been going on for quite a while since about 2006. Um, and their EV, the, the original Roe uh, EI5 EV estate, uh, came out, I think, in 2017, and now there's a new model, which the MG5 EV that's taken uh, to export to places like Ireland uh, is based on that. Yeah. Mentioning um, the MG and, and the, the brand recognition there, but when people then realize that it's a Chinese manufactured EV, will sometimes they look down their nose on that. Uh, what's your experience of that over there and the, the difference between a Chinese domestic brand I hear sometimes there's a difference between the quality or do you find that that's that's becoming a bit more uh, bit more equalized so Chinese manufacturing is kind of got this reputation of poor quality I mean that's mostly down to us in the West that we go to China to look for cheap manufacturing right so we're pushing for we, we don't want high precision manufacturing we want cheap low kind of low quality manufacturing to get those prices down when you talk about domestic Chinese products, the view in China is drastically changing. A few years ago, like people only wanted an iPhone, they only wanted foreign brands. But now, domestic brands are coming up. You've got Huawei in the mobile phone section, and then you've also got, you know, really high end premium EV manufacturers, NEO. You've got really tech based manufacturers like Xpeng. And Chinese people are really kind of quite proud of this, that, you know, they're producing really good products. So I think Chinese government also mentioned that they want to be more like Germany. So they don't want to do away with their manufacturing, but they want to turn it into a more high quality precision manufacturing. Mm. Do you okay. think, Will, by them locating in the United Kingdom in long heat, that will make a big difference as well for perception? I think because of being built in the UK I and mean, it's going to give MG the advantage that Xpeng, Neo, BYD don't currently have is they don't build cars with the steering wheel on the right side, you know, so you won't see those cars for a while in the British Isles or in Ireland, but that gives MG an opportunity to really bring a decent EV for a decent price. So, I mean, Compared, comparative to its size, its tech, and its price, I mean, it, it's it's a good value proposition. I think. I yeah, think it will sell I well. I think you're you're absolutely spot on. Like uh, only in the last few days, I've noticed where I am. I live in a city of you know just under hundred thousand people, but I've seen two um, separate uh, taxis which were MG fives, um, which uh, I, I couldn't have predicted. You know, and there will be a lot more on the roads in the next few months. I think. And uh, are you? Do you think then that the MG five, just because that's the video where we're, we're where we're looking at today that they've got a good chance over here i think i think number one like it's an estate car there's not enough estate cars you know and there's a there's a big yeah. section of people that want estate cars like you're saying taxis obviously and there's a, a lot of people don't want suvs you know and it, it gives you something different and mg's always been a quite popular brand in the uk uh, it's had a uh, and i know you guys are in ireland but it's had a very long history there so i don't i don't see why for its price point um it wouldn't be extremely popular it it, it offers a decent range it has the the you know the connection that, that most people want in in a car and i think for an ev it, it looks pretty good as well do you see more chinese manufacturers building their presence in europe and the united states or do you think they're going to focus on the domestic market because it's so big in china will so I think it depends, and I think we know which manufacturers are going to go um, abroad. It's either going to be those that have a huge amount of capital behind them or those that are already quite large uh, in themselves. Um, I see them 
they've all got an eye on the US because it's the largest auto market in the world. So that's that's obvious. But I, I believe, well, I know that Europe is going to be the first step that they take um, with Xpeng, Neo and BYD all already exporting cars to Norway. Neo is about to open up their Neo house, which is like a dealership experience, coffee, you know, um, <laughs> something you've never seen before. I, I, it's very hard to explain what they are. Um, they sell clothes and, 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 and all different kinds of thing. They're really trying to create a, a brand around, around their vehicles. Um, and then from there, we're already seeing, I think, uh, Neo on their last earnings call mentioned the fact they already have a European CEO uh, and they're already got 40 employees in Norway. And we've seen multiple job offerings floating around for Xpeng and Neo in other e EU countries. I think uh, Belgium, uh, the Netherlands, France and Germany. Yeah. OK. That's absolutely fascinating. Look, Will, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure having you on here today. Thanks. And just um, getting that perspective from, from someone who's over in China now for, for what, 10 years. Uh, so we really appreciate that. And um, just to say to anybody watching this as well, go over and check out uh, Will's channel, China Driven. Uh, he's got some, when I came across there a few weeks ago, I was so impressed with the, the production quality in it. And, uh, he, yeah. <laughs> and you have a bit of fun on the way as well, Will, which I yeah, think is worth it. Yeah. So got, thanks got very much. Massively sunburnt. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks so much to Will for coming on. If you haven't already subscribed to the China Driven YouTube channel, make sure you do. And when you're subscribing to YouTube channels, make sure that you've already subscribed to the EV Platform YouTube channel. Let us know in the comments what you think about this today's episode and make sure that you hit the like button. This has been EV Platform. Thanks for watching.